I am currently an independent consultant. Uh, I'm based in Senegal. Um, I work uh, mostly on humanitarian aid. Um, I spend a lot of time working on drought. Uh, my education is a bit uh, not traditional to AAG. I, I didn't study geography. Um, I work more on the geospatial side, so I was self-taught. Uh, University of YouTube, you know. So, um, as a consultant, I have a number of different clients that want uh, different things, uh, but all usually relating to geospatial products. Um, so it's a lot of remote set, it's a lot of earth observation um, that I have to do, uh, particularly for detecting vegetation levels, whether or not we have a drought, um, what's the rainfall situation, and then a fair amount of field data that needs to be collected. Um, you know, uh, participatory data, so going to communities and having them draw maps, which we then digitize. Um, a lot of information from surveys that we then turn to geo, uh, geographical data products. Uh, for about five years before that, I was working pretty much exclusively on tracking drought to prep for humanitarian aid. So the idea was that if we could see where a drought was coming ahead of time, we could pre-position programs. Um, it was happenstance, so I've been about 10 years in the traditional humanitarian aid sector um, and uh, one day uh, I was working, uh, so 2012, I was working in uh, Côte d'Ivoire for the Ministry of Agriculture and they wanted a map and I didn't know how to make a map. Uh, I had made maps before like in Microsoft Paint but I didn't know how to go about doing it so I went online. I, Googled and I started watching YouTube videos and I realized that there was this whole world behind it, right? Uh, you know, just even scratching the surface of GIS, it wasn't just about making maps, but there was so much more into it. And it was kind of, that's when it was love at first sight. And I realized I wanted to transition my career more into doing that. And over the course of a few years, the transition was slow, but, um, but after, I'd say a year or two after that moment is when I went full time into GIS. So the self-teaching part allowed me to basically start working on projects. You know, I had uh, at this job, my job was to uh, work on projects that were measuring rice production. And from then I started making maps and I had kind of like a personal proof of concept when I started making those maps and doing that geographic analysis, you know, like trying to do a spatial analysis of rice production. That gave me a proof of concept that I could then, you know, send to other employers, other clients when I was looking for work. And I felt that, surprisingly, like being able to show people this is the thing I can do really helped and erased the fact that I didn't have a GIS certificate or a master's in geography. When you work in NGOs or the humanitarian sector, or when you work for a non-geographic organization that wants you to do GIS, they want you to just do maps. That's all. They want you to make maps of stuff that they can send to a donor for a proposal or that they can put in a report. Uh, there's very little uh, work on what spatial thinking can do for us. And I think that the interesting part is being able to, to give you a good example, like if you are planning a distribution, right? If you're planning a distribution of cash or food, instead of what we would typically do is just getting a beneficiary list of people in different villages and saying we're going to distribute to X, Y, and Z villages, using geographic data um, to do a spatial analysis of these villages, saying, okay, what are these villages close to? Like, are we only doing a distribution of villages within five kilometers of a paved road in a country where 90% or you know, a large number of people don't live near a paved road? And those are the kind of questions that only spatial thinking can answer. Um, what's the react? What is the interaction that people have with their environment? You know, um, are our beneficiaries, for instance, only in one particular type of? Uh, are they not in the semi-arid part of the country? Are they only in the more forested part of the country? What does that mean? And so I think that that is really where geography gets to play a role. Is kind of, if you're a GIS person, trying to move it beyond just maps. I mean, it's, it's, it is so context specific, right? Like you can end up 
uh, where I think all of these concepts do play a role. Um, whether or not you use the you know, official nomenclature is you know, a difference, but I think that it all plays a role. Like if you are trying to do spatial thinking, like really just trying to break it down at the end of the day and think, okay, what is the relationship that these people that we are trying to target for assistance, what is their relationship to space? Um, being able to translate those concepts is really important. I'd say that more than just knowing a particular concept is knowing how to translate it. And if you're a geographer and you're working in the humanitarian sector or you're working for government, like taking these ideas and turning it into something that's digestible, right? Um, you know, you don't want to go and say, you don't want to go and for instance read it like, you don't want to go to, for instance, to your boss who's not a geographer and start talking about, you know, the epistemological reconception of space or use words like pra practice. I still don't even know what praxis is.